Hey guys, how's it going? It's Kyle here with another Infinite Magic Group video. And in today's video, we finally got some good news from the devs. They seem to be finally giving us a little pushback on the food issue in this game, how they're going to be solving it. They answered a lot of questions. We also had the dev feedback on February 24th, so I'll be breaking that down as well. Pretty excited about that because I think the big thing about this game that has been really frustrating is just how tedious the grind is for building out heroes. I've never seen a game put up with such an annoying issue for so long and I think that you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as like they're just not listening to the community and they're going out of their way to incentivize spending. But then the other side of it is the game's actually good. If they would just stop being so stubborn, then we finally have a good game and we finally got that balance. So I'm trying to stay positive about it, even though it's been multiple months of us telling them these things. And now they're finally, after massive amounts of pushback, they're finally listening. So I think that is... Mostly frustrating, but at the same time, silver lining, kind of a good thing. But before we get into it, final day of the giveaway for Aptoids, I'm going to roll that clip, and then we're going to get into the video. Hey guys, this is going to Discare here with a special announcement. Got a 10x $25 giveaway promotion from Aptoid. It is going on from February 24th to February 28th. Okay, so here is how to enter this promotion. So it is going on from February 24th to February 28th. And you have to use my promo code KyraMobile5 in the AppCoins wallet that you'll need to have downloaded on either an Android phone or an Android emulator. I'm currently using BlueStacks and I will show you how to do that here momentarily. This is a Google form that you will also see linked down in the description that you need to click to fill out some information. Currently I'm covering up my email address down below and then there's a next button down below. Let's click that. Then you just need to put in your email address and then also your wallet you are using for purchases. That is how you enter. And if you have one purchase within that time frame, you will be eligible to win one of the $25 gift cards. So now let me show you what you need to do on the actual app itself. So here is the app coins wall. You can see it in the bottom left corner here. You click this and then you need to go to the cog wheel in the top right and then put promo code CarMobile 5 That is necessary for you to be eligible for the promotion. And then where you can find the wallet, I'm not going to show it because I don't want to show my own wallet here, but it is down here in the bottom right ish corner where my wallets, if you click my wallets there, then you will see it right on the front, kind of where this new perk is, and it will show you exactly what your wallet code is, and that's what you're gonna link down there in the Google form. So that is how you enter. Good luck in the contest, and with that, guys, I'm out of here. Peace. Okay, so let's start with the good news here. So the first thing is going to be what he's posting in the content creator. This is like a separate chat. There's quite a few things that we could be excited about. And then also he says at the bottom here, you could talk about this info with other players. And then when there are more details, we'll let you know. So the first thing is the max cap of event stamina for every mini game will increase by 50%. Players in Europe will not waste the automatic recovery of the event stamina at the beginning of each mini events. Maybe that was a thing uh, because of the time frame when they would update. I'm not sure there updated in two weeks so and then they also shout out who actually gave that suggestion which i think is really nice so i think those many events they've changed it to where it's not just this crazy whale event yes you can whale but it used to be like okay here's a hero but not that many rewards whereas now sometimes like for example even in this one right here at stage three yeah, let me go to the voyage one i like this one because you could just get a epic phantom dragon eye at round three you know that's something that i would actually be willing to spend gems for and not have to go crazy and then they're gonna be giving us 50% more. So as long as they don't actually change the rewards here, I would say just going for something like this is totally worth it. Uh, the other ones, I'm not too familiar with them. When it comes to these events, they're kind of boring and they're just like clickable. So it's not something I really care too much about, but I think that's more so an issue with the game itself where I'm not like feeling super engaged with the game. So then these events, I'm not like trying to calculate them as much as I should be. And so hopefully they address things that have been going on in the game and it makes it to where we're more excited to do stuff like this. And so number two, devs um, decided to increase the drop quality in Dwarven Ruins. I think this is well overdue because the gear in this game is so hard to acquire. It's so difficult to actually do this content and finally being able to increase the drop rates of the higher quality is going to be such a big deal because of the crafting system in this game. I think they really need to emphasize that and make it better. And I think a lot of people have been giving this feedback for a very long time. So they're finally doing that, but it has so much potential where it's like, okay, yes, it's, this is difficult content, but they give us ways to get gear. And when we finally get Epic and Legendary, we could crush it in. Like we should be using that system all the time to finally get, and we kind of graduate from only using, like, let's say we're only using 
effect hit sets or speed sets and then eventually we're gonna okay we finally got enough epic and legendary pieces we get a craft five star versions of the better sets then we graduate from there for like maybe six star versions of this or a mixture of them and then finally move only to six star pieces that are crafted so i'm glad that they're looking into actually increasing the uh, amount there because right now it's just not enough finally being able to do 26 it removes the four star quality but then you only have a 10 percent chance or a two percent chance to get like the actual good stuff here i do i absolutely love the system that they have where you can craft stuff here in the workshop i think this is such a good thing it's just we don't get enough epic pieces that it makes it towards very difficult to actually use this because it's taking four pieces into one so it really needs to be a lot more if they're going to be doing this so Hopefully that it's actually a big increase in the percentage there. And then three daily center reward. This is awesome. I think every game needs this. So it mainly includes basic resources, eggs, XP pots, etc. Devs are still designing rewards. So can't show more details at the time being. Unfortunately, we have no plans to adjust the food conception of an A5 hero. We choose to increase the food as rewards. So fair enough. It's solving the issue one way or the other. Does it? I don't care how you solve the issue, but just solve the damn issue because Right now, it is very hard to be motivated to play this game because the, I think the fun of this game is taking the heroes you get and trying to solve puzzles. And right now, we don't have enough heroes to make it engaging and fun. So, uh, or we have the heroes, I should say, but we don't have enough built out to make it engaging and fun. And that's my big problem with the game right now, and it's just getting kind of stale. So them increasing the food, whether it be making a few heroes cost less food or just giving us more food, same difference. We'll see how it plays out. And then we have good news in the future. Uh, more quests, more rewards in Dungeon Bounty. As last dev feedback writes, plenty of Mythic Hero Shards and tons of free rewards like uh, Legend Dragon Eyes, Five Star Egg, uh, Dragon Eyes, uh, or Legend Skill Scrolls. So I think that's awesome. And then also dev team are considering reducing the stamina consumption of Dragon Age Dungeon. This is part of the optimization of the stamina system. We are currently analyzing the stamina consumption distri distribution for all players. So basically, they're just trying to calculate the minimum that we're okay with and that we'll tolerate without them losing enough revenue. So hopefully the combination of lower stamina costs in the um, in, in that dungeon and then also more food on the daily reward will mean we could we could actually get excited about these heroes coming through and being able to level them versus right now we have so many just saved up wanting to be leveled that we can't. On the flip side of that, I do feel like them giving us legendary skills uh, scrolls in this game is way better than raid for example like you could build up as many legendary heroes as you want but getting those legendary books is just not going to happen unless you're wailing or very patient so that is one of the benefits compared to raid but at the same time it'd be a lot more fun if we got to play with the heroes we actually have yes you know you can't book them in in raid but you can at least make them relevant and then Yes, they have longer cooldowns. Yes, they don't do as much damage, but you can at least build them up, whereas you can't in this game. There's that. Now let's actually get into the dev feedback, which I thought had a couple good insights there. Okay, so here is the dev feedback. This is from February 24th here, and let's look into this. This is a repeat of what they were saying earlier with this, will Dungeon Bounty add more quests? Because of the abundant rewards, Dungeon Bounty is so popular, we believe that some of the completed some of you have completed all quests. I bet like analytically, they have a very small percentage that actually have completed all of them. Even though the people probably watching this video, I'd say a bigger percentage have completed uh, this. But don't worry, the quest will be expanded in the future. Will Dungeon Bounty and more rewards? This is a repeat of what they were saying earlier, where it's going to be getting, it seems like they're going to add more, which I think is just better for everyone involved. Them adding this, I thought was a really nice boost to people's Mythic Shard amounts plus like legendary scrolls and dragon eyes stuff along those lines so when it, whether it be food other resources i thought this was a great idea that they did and i hope that they add more here relatively soon and then i want the order use craft to craft ingots i think this is awesome this would be such a big boost so this would really add on to the other thing where they're increasing the drop rates so being able to use this system and making this one of the big parts of the game because this is, the whole point of these games is to be grinding for you know better and better gear but it's so discouraging when you don't really dial in the the sense of progression fast enough whereas i feel like this game it really expects a lot out of you when it comes to your time on how much you're willing to just eat it kind of for a bit you know i 
they really need to start speeding these things up and making it faster and better. And then instead of artificially increasing the time frames of things to give themselves developmental time. So hopefully they get this out soon so we can actually really feel like we're progressing faster. So Forge Gear can give heroes a huge boost, but in the current period, the demand gradually decreases, which leads to redundancy of these materials. Therefore, we think the succession is reasonable and the synthesis, synthesis path from ore to ingot is under development. I think that's great. And then I think this is a big thing. Save, save that stuff. Unless you're very, you, you just started to hit five star pieces, save it all because being able to make it something with the potential of five and six stars is infinitely better. So don't spend the four to five star materials in that crafting section. And then need some new sets. I think this is fantastic. So the equipment mentioned in Actar's video with the attribute of speed plus effect res is the new set that will be brought to the content when the new faction emerges in March. There is also another tier two set, which is very beneficial for bleed and burning heroes. And then the it says, can you imagine the attributes? I'm assuming that's effect hit plus attack would probably be what it is for something like that. Or maybe attack plus mastery. That can work as well. But maybe they're going to do a combination because it's a tier two. This would be one where it's all three maybe. Where it's like um, a combination of attack, mastery, and effect hit. Because it's the higher version. And then... Item prices in the arena store need to be reconsidered. Okay, we've received complaints from our players about unre unreasonable prices for arena store items. Therefore, we, we will redesign the, their prices. To be honest, the advanced arena is mid to in-game content, which is very hard for beginners who cannot earn enough coins. It's time to encourage players to engage in the advanced arena by adjusting the item prices. I think also, too, another issue is it's just kind of boring content. They need to kind of spice it up, in my opinion. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's like, okay... If you don't like this, maybe you just don't like the game. But at the same time, I've never liked the th the um, three team battles. It just seems tedious to me. It's kind of fun to strategize it, but I always feel like the rewards never match the effort. Like when it comes to, especially raid and especially this game, the rewards don't match the effort ever. Where it's like, okay, arena should be the hardest content, but it also should have by far the best rewards. You're like you're really incentivized to do it, but it doesn't feel that way ever in these games. It, it seems so backwards to me, and it always made me question why people put so much effort like in raid to be the best arena player when it, it takes insane amounts of whaling you know, to get all the gear. You have all these people with, you know, um, exclusive five pieces of gear or exclusive five characters. I just don't understand it. Whereas other games that I've played, the arena is the, yes, it's the whale spot, but yes, you get crazy rewards. So I don't understand how they get away with it, in my opinion. Um, but that's why it's just kind of boring to me. And and the uh, actual shop is just not great. Like the prices are so like all, whenever I look at a price in the advanced arena shop, I look, okay, that is a massive setback to being able to get Aukman, for example. So I just think it's it's dumb. And then I hope that Elemental City will add an interface to let guild members know each other's needs. Okay, that's a nice quality of life feature that I think is great. Uh, some heroes need to be buffed. Okay, I think that's always gonna be an ongoing thing. And then we've adjusted seven legendary heroes in the last patch. I think they've been really good with this. I, maybe a little faster if, if there's any criticism to levy towards them. We are thrilled to observe that anyone that everyone loved El, New Elbic and Elliot, which I agree with. I think those are two fantastic changes. It turned a character that was mediocre into something pretty good and then turned a character that was pretty bad into something, I would say, pretty great. And then the developer team has been working on rebalancing heroes. Our goal is to make the battle more strategic and exciting. Definitely for the best. We'll keep an eye on feedback from the community and there'll be, and there will need, there'll be more hero adjustments in the future. Unfortunately, uh, Hell 9000's meta will end. Wow, okay, so at least they're in on the memes. I, I do like that, that they're aware of what people are saying about uh, that character. Maybe they'll just buff him and now he's going to be like S tier. So people, <laughs> imagine if they buff Hell 9000 like crazy and then people watch a, a video, like an old tier list and then it, everyone's saying Hell's trash and then <laughs> in reality Hell is actually really good. And then uh, please give us out of a complete for Brave Trail and Elemental City. I think that's super needed. It's so boring. Right now, currently, Brave Trail is out. It's free rewards. I'm just not even bothering. It's just too boring. And the good idea, initiate levels of the Brave, Brave Trial and Element of the City will no longer be as difficult as your power grows. As a result, Sweep Function will be launched in the near future. And then more quality of life features. I, I think overall, they've been pretty good with quality of life. More is always better. And so, as you can see, we've been working on improving quality of life for IMR. For example, the quick purchase feature in the currency market is very welcome. I completely agree. I think they did a great job with that. And then let's talk about the next plan. 
be easier to switch equipment. Okay, they this is massive. The gear, their whole gear system needs to improve, and that's a start. Smart casting will become super smart, which you can support saving equipment, auras, etc. Because a hero needs different stats and different gameplays. Okay, this would be awesome if they do that, where you can actually set when you're changing the character in that system, you actually change their gear too. That would be wild, and you won't waste your time on switching emblems slash auras for PVE and PVP. That, that would be such a big quality of life change, in my opinion. And then the hero trial function will, will also be more useful. It will show more customiz uh, customizable attribute settings, smart casting, and the ability to copy your own hero's data to the trial function. Can't wait, for, can't wait to enjoy CC's fabulous hero review videos, and we also hope that our other players can participate in testing new heroes and make your own hero list. So that right there is going to make a massive difference in being able to actually truly evaluate a hero on whether it's not worth pulling or not. So I think that's fantastic. I think those are uh, like really cool changes that they're adding. Hopefully what they do is they make it to where it's not just an arena setting. If they can change it and allow us to try the clan boss or try uh, dungeons, that would be super cool. But then it would also, you know, maybe take away from actually playing the game. Uh, from their perspective, where it's like, okay, people kind of get an idea of the game, um, don't need to actually spend money on the characters. Not sure, but uh, that it, it seems like they're really trying to boost that up a lot. So it would be cool to see where they can go with that. And then that's pretty much it. So very encouraging news here when it comes to the new changes. I really like that they've given a lot of good feedback. Yes, the, ele the elephant in the room is definitely the food, but it looks like they actually are finally giving us changes there and they're realizing they need to actually do that so this is the best progress we've had since the game's inception when it comes to food so i do I look forward to potentially that being enough to make it bearable on that front because that, that is the big problem in the game so far so with that guys i'm out of here peace